Good evening and welcome to Legal Eye. I'm Max Hope and we're here in Bucharest, joined by George Babalu, the leading... Whoa, whoa, whoa. My name is Georgi Babalan. And let me tell you what a great pleasure it is to have such a wonderful English reporter here to showcase the great Romanian justice system. And uh, my own small contribution to this matter. Well, that's not exactly why I'm here. But I am correct in saying you were heavily involved in the Bivolaru case. Yes, I think it's fair to say I was one of the leaders of justice, ensuring the majestic Romanian laws were upheld. So to begin, what do you class as a criminal? Yoga teachers? Not just yoga teachers. We hunt the people who preach their liberated views to others. People are exposed to these non-conformist ideas and they get independent, start to question their life, and you know what happens next. So, who are the victims of Mr. Bivolaru's supposed crimes? Thousands of people living happier and healthier lives from his teachings? My friend, they think they are happier and healthier, but who are they to decide that? Would that mean that I am an unhappy person? Look at me. We only helped the poor young innocent girl who was taken advantage of by Mr. Bivalaru when her life was just about to begin. You mean the girl that refutes any claim that Mr. Bivalaru did anything untoward to her and actually never laid a finger on? That girl? Yes, that one. But she doesn't know what happened to her. She is too young to realise. But luckily, our strong helping hand was there. Yet she was old enough to realise that you tortured her for hours on end, subjected her to subhuman treatment, abused her physically and mentally, and tried to force her to sign statements against her will. How can you justify that type of treatment to a victim you claim to protect? My friend, you get carried away with your sopranos and godfather scenarios. We merely had a short chat with the girl. So you consider 14 hours a short chat? 14 hours. It goes by in the blink of an eye. I didn't even get a tea break that day. Well, perhaps if you had a gun pointed to your head, you might have a different perception of time. Guns, threats, abuse. There you go again with your horrorwood sensationalism. You make it sound like a terrible experience. The girl couldn't remember things the way we would like, so we had to, let's say, help her remember. Take things into our own hands, so to speak. Justice can be tough sometimes, but we are not cruel. We even helped induce comfort in the hysterical girl. Induce comfort? You mean when you illegally sedated her with powerful drugs in order to get her to sign the statement you wrote? Well, she seemed happy enough to sign at the time. The pill probably helped calm her mind, which brought her memory back. Still, compromising images of her were released to the media and her face was shown across national television. If she was such a vulnerable young child, why not give her the protection of anonymity afforded in most developed countries? Firstly, you don't know for sure it was us who leaked all those pictures. It could have been anybody. Maybe it was you. And secondly, even if it was us, given the extremities of this case, I think it was necessary for the public to see the danger posed by these people, by us taking positive action. Positive action? Don't you mean a personal vendetta against Mr. Bivolaru and the false imprisonment and bullying of a crimeless victim? Hey, you should watch your words, my young friend. There is nothing personal in this case. This is justice. That is all. Is it not true, since Mr. Bivolaru started teaching yoga, he has been imprisoned, beaten, had his books confiscated and burnt without reason, he has had false accusations made against him, and had his apartment blown up? And you say it's not personal, just justice. Yes, just good people bringing bad people to answer. 
how do you explain the fact that most recently your department had put false charges through Europol which didn't reflect the nature of the supposed crime? Yes, well, that was unfortunate. An accident. An accident? Yes, nothing intentional there. It was just a typing error. A typo. <laughs> you know how small these keypads are on phones these days. Very tricky to get everything 100% correct. You mistyped alleged sex with a minor for sexual exploitation of children and child pornography. No, not at all. I didn't do it. I don't even have a smartphone. <laughs> Who did it then? One of the guys back at the bureau. Firstly, you're telling me the submission was made on a phone. And secondly, you're saying someone mistyped sexual exploitation of children and child pornography instead of alleged sex with a minor and didn't even notice before sending? Yes. Easy mistake to make. I heard these phones have autocorrect and all these type of things. Unfortunate, but unavoidable. So, you are saying such a flagrant typo that works so much in your favour was not intentional? Absolutely. There was categorically no intention behind the typo. At least not up to the point of the meeting. What meeting? The, uh, the meeting we had about trying to get an arrest warrant for Mr. Bivolaru. So you had a meeting about trying to get an arrest warrant for Mr. Bivolaru, and a few days later, the typo miraculously appeared, giving you the exact leverage that you needed in order to get your warrant. And you are saying there was no intention behind that typo? Yes, just a funny coincidence. <laughs> well, some might say a huge coincidence. I clearly said there was no intention behind it. It worked in our favour, yes. But it was all just coincidence. Unfortunate for Mr. Bivalaru, fortunate for us. But you said it was suggested that it would be useful if you had a stronger case. Yes, I might suggest that I like omelettes, but that doesn't mean I try to lay my own eggs, does it? So you still maintain, after you had this meeting, to get an arrest warrant issued and a few days later this typo appeared, that it's still just a massive coincidence. Exactly. Finally you started to listen. Do you really think the European public will swallow that? The public. They swallow everything we feed them. If they don't like it, maybe they should send us bigger phones. It might stop it from happening in future. But then again, I can't guarantee that. Typos aside, what about the fact that Sweden has already offered asylum to Mr. Bivolaru under the Geneva Convention, saying that Mr. Bivolaru wouldn't get a fair trial in Romania? Well, Sweden, Geneva, what do they know about how things are done in Romania? Let me tell you something. Listen up, you might actually learn. In Romania, we have the best justice system in the world. Here, the courts, the police and the media all work together for justice. Not like your British freedom of speech. Nonsense that sounds very grandiose, but does nothing. Laws need to be capable of being, well, massaged a little by the clever few that know what's best for the rest of the people. Sweden, Geneva, EU, with all their rules and regulations, doesn't leave room for massage. They leave justice up to the people. What do the people know about justice? <laughs> yes, it means sometimes we have to take matters into our own hands. But if that's what's needed, that's what we have to do. Everybody wins. Except the people. Like Mr. Bivolaru. Well, tell me what system doesn't have a small bit of collateral damage. You have to break eggs to make omelettes, huh? Systems run by the self-interested will always have collateral damage. But the universal laws are infallible. And in the end, the divine truth will prevail. And all so-called collateral damage will have to be answered for.